What's up? It's your boy Aaron Page, and I'm back with another video for y'all today. Do me a favor, hit the like and subscribe button, and hit the notification bell for the YouTube algorithm. And let's jump right into this video right now. If you were alone in a room with a gay pastor, what would you ask? Do you view yourself as an openly gay pastor as a political statement? What are your thoughts on conversion therapy? Does it really say in the Bible that being gay is a sin? So the first thing is we have to look at is that... Here we go. Hi, I'm Haridas. Strap your seatbelts. I have some questions for you today. Awesome, nice to meet you, Haridas. My name is Pastor Kurt. My first question is, what is your religion? I am a progressive Pentecostal, which would be a Christian. What inspired you to become oh, wow. a pastor? It's a funny story. I really didn't desire to be a pastor. Um, I wanted to be a police officer. And so I always joke when I'm preaching that I got the peas mixed up. There was a church <laughs> looking for a youth leader. So I took the youth leader job, developed a passion and a love for it. Is being gay ever an issue for you? Um, like, does that affect you being a pastor in any way? In some instances, it does. I get uninvited to stuff, and I'm the black sheep of, of, some, of some spaces. You know, something happened that was really funny. Um, one of my friends invited me to come and preach at his church. Some of the members from that congregation wanted to hear me again, so they came to my church. I wanted to thank God for my boyfriend being there, and I saw every person that came from that congregation they got up and exited stage right. Oh, wow. I get a lot of hate mail that I'm going to hell and I'm teaching false. Real quick, I wonder if he was gay um, before he became a youth, a youth leader or after, because that would determine a lot. Hopefully not after, because that's just like you are, you, you disregarded everything that you've read in the Bible and just went with what you wanted to do. And that to me is like, blatant smack in the face to our Lord and Savior. Doctrine. In the beginning of my ministry, that hurt me. On the flip side, when a young person comes to you and they're thinking about committing suicide, then who's going to hold them up and tell them, you know what, you don't have to give up and you don't have to allow people to dictate your path. You have the power to dictate your own path. I definitely resonate with that a lot. Have you ever had to hide yourself to the people of your church? I don't think that I hid my sexuality or hid who I am, but I did use a lot of discretion um, so that I wouldn't offend people. It took me until 26 to actually authentically be myself. I went through this journey of dating girls and dating guys. I would go out with my girlfriend because I, I wanted everybody in the church to love me and to like me. And then I would go home and cuddle with my boyfriend after. It wasn't until like I had an ahu moment. What? I just said basically to hell with people. And I understand that God created me and he built me to be the person that I am. And See, that's the problem. I said this before and I'll say it again. God didn't create you to be gay. You are gay because of your circumstances in your life, the things that you've seen, and um, just your life, how, how things played out in your life, that made you gay. Something happened. God didn't create you gay. God don't create killers. He didn't create um, Cain to kill Abel. Something happened. I don't know why people keep saying that's how God created. No, God didn't create me, Aaron, to be um sexual immoral or lust after another woman besides my wife if i did that that was my own decision god didn't create me to, so we can't just use that nobody can be kurt but kurt i mean i'm i'm also gay yay <laughs> yay of course <laughs> and um it definitely took me a bit longer than i would have liked to have figured it out how did um the acceptance in the church of queer people affect you and your own like mental like state? I don't think my sexuality was exposed yet, mm -hmm. but I will tell you um, that I use hand gestures. And the bishop called me into his office and he was like, all those hand gestures and stuff like that that you're doing, men don't do that. It triggered me hey. to where if I move my hands, I'll catch myself, put my hands together and say, no, don't move your hands. I remember I had a similar experience, he not so much too. hand movements, tell. but the way I walked. Like, I remember it was like of three course. of the like older guys were like, you know, you walk like a girl, why is your butt out like that? <laughs> and I didn't think I was walking like 
so <laughs> so flamboyantly, but that moment stuck with me like up until now I still think about it. I think that in the world that we live in today that we can actually be more gender fluid. Mm -hmm. um, and if you like it, you like it. Mm -hmm. Make it work. So that's how the world needs to be. Make it work. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, make it work. If we're going to say that, then that means that we can let a freaking, we can let a 28-year-old child molester be with a child. Like, what? What do you mean make it work? It's all wrong. It's not wrong in his eyes because that's his sin. But God looks at it as the same. It's a sexual immorality. It's wrong. You can't be a pastor of a church thinking like this. That whole church, you lead them all astray. This is serious, y'all. This is serious. You can't do that. <laughs> How did your family handle your sexuality and your religious together? My family is very understanding. In all actuality, my parents are members of my church. Mm -hmm. I don't really have a coming out story because I really never came out. I just became more authentically myself. But I will say I had an initial conversation with my parents. My mom said that she already knew. It took my dad two years. Of course. He would use terms like them and those people. Now he understands that at the end of the day that it's all about love. Have you ever taken an Am I Gay quiz? No, I've never done that. I, I've taken them. Okay. That's why I asked. What was your results? Uh, bisexual, baby. All right. <laughs> Do you view yourself as an openly gay pastor as a political statement? Mm, no. Me being a pastor just means that I'm passionate about people mm -hmm. and that God has called me and given me a unique identifier to be able to love and to appreciate and to speak life into people. That's it. Real quick. Um, can he be a pastor? Of course he can't be a pastor of a church and living in sin, but can he be called to be a pastor, but he's living in sin. And so it's hindering him. Can that be, can that be what it is? He could be, he could, he may have been called to be a pastor, but he's allowing that sin to control him and you can't live up to your potential for God when you're doing Satan's work, when you're living for Satan. You can't really say in the Bible that being gay is a sin. Biblical text doesn't introduce the word homosexuality until the 1900s. And so then you have to go back and you have to look at the original manuscript, which frames it from a different perspective. So it talks about giving the natural affection of a man to a woman or a woman to a man. Well, what is your natural affection? Is your natural affection to a man or is your natural affection to a woman? We are divinely everything that God wants us to be. I think that's awesome. I've never heard that part of it before. What are your thoughts on conversion therapy? Uh, I think that's the stupidest thing that um, somebody could ever do. And I hope that whoever does that, I hope that they find a guiding light. People can't be converted from who they authentically are. There's something that was called Exodus. They would learn the Bible and they would stay there and pray and think that that would change their situation. But they found out that they were sneaking in each other's rooms like late at night. So it was, it didn't work. <laughs> Do you believe that you will go to hell? Oh, heck, you by Jackie, you no. Know. <laughs> I'm not going to hell. I think that um, God is very heart intended. And so he looks at our heart. I don't think in him there's neither male nor female. I definitely think that God looks at your soul and not at who you choose to love. How does it? Help me y'all, please help me. I'm losing my mind over here. Jesus Christ, whenever he went to someone and delivered them from their sin, delivered them from sickness, death, whatever. He, what was his, what did he always say? Go and sin no more, right? So the Bible calls sexual immorality a sin, no matter if it's you wanting to be with a man, no matter if it's you wanting to be a girl with a girl, a, a man or a girl with a kid, a man or a girl with an animal, whatever the case may be, it's all sexual and moral. And so, yes, you are sinning and you can go to hell for living in sin. How do you not see that? How, is, how does he not see that? Oh, I know why. Because he doesn't want to. Because it's his sin and he don't want to give it up. It's too hard. We all have to do it. Oh, come on, man.
does it make you feel when more conservative pastors spread hate about the LGBTQ community and even like spread like threats? It hurts my feelings that people operate in hate, especially when we serve a God that loves. Um, John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world. Um, when people teach hate instead of love, it makes me, one, question their ability to really hear from God or to speak for God. Was there ever a time that you resented the church? Yes, I had a situation where I was fired <gasps> and I resented the church for a very long time. My she acting like that's a surprise. Come on now, you know what you know he was fired. How to feel better about myself. So how does one take religion and come to terms with themselves. Like this is that love you're talking about. How do we find our own truth? The first misconception is that people want to be religious. God's desire is to be relational with us. If we go back to Genesis and we look in the garden with Adam and Eve, God was building relationship with them. He wasn't building religion with them. Do you ever get any judgment from queer people about you this being is sick. so religious? So many gay people were, have been hurt or damaged by the church. You know, it does take people a minute to realize that religion is not what we do. Relationship is what we build. What advice would you give to a gay person? I ain't gonna lie, before I seen the face, I thought that was a girl. Wow. <laughs> who is fearful of going to church. Um, you can Google and find churches um, that are inclusive and accepting. And then after you do that, you have to find a church that meets your specific needs. I think one of the downfalls with going to just any church is that some churches are tolerant, but they're not celebratory. A church that tolerates people is a church where you won't see anybody that looks like you in the leadership. I um, started so basically, he's saying go to a church that accepts gay people and probably is openly gay and the pastor is probably gay. And so if the pastor's probably gay, he's also probably looking at little kids. I don't know. And then there's also probably people that's having sex in the church. There's, pro there's people that's not married having sex. And then there's probably people that's like stealing from the church. And then you probably got some people in there that cuss. And it's like, okay, well, you know, God judges our heart and it's okay to... Like, do you see what this causes? Do y'all see... The, the, the cancer that this causes. This is why God wants us to get rid of our sin. We come to church broken, full of sin, full of all the bad things that the world has and that we have given ourselves. And then Jesus cleanses us and then we have to follow the way he told us to live so that we can live righteously and we can let go of this sin and that we can be children of God. But you can't do that when you're holding on to sin. Everybody sins. I get it. Everybody has things that they ought not do. I get it. But we have to die to our flesh. We have to understand that that is bad. It's not okay. It's bad. And I can't do this. I can't think like this. I can't do these actions. In my church 12 years ago because I wanted to make sure that there was a place where people could feel comfortable and safe. My church is not just a gay church. So you have straight people, you have gay people, you have upside down people, you know. <laughs> we're like Dr. Seuss, you know, it's, it's a table full of everybody. So would you say your church is like more of the like eccentric, loud, or is it more like quiet side? My church is um, loud. Jump, scream, holler, enjoy yourself while you're there. Renewed, which is the name of my church, you can experience renewal in whatever process or way that you need to experience it. We have this time in the service where we do meet and greet, and a girl came up to me after at the end of the service and said that she hadn't been hugged by anyone in two years. Just knowing that like someone like you as like an openly queer pastor is just out there in the world and just like a young little gay boy is able to look at you and be like, wow, it's very special to me and I wanna thank you personally. Ah, uh, thank you. So you say I'm out here and I'm out here to stay. Yes. I love to. Ah, uh, I knew it was <laughs> you. Me. You are a fireball. I knew you were short. <laughs> Smash or pass, Jesus. What, what did I just hear? Listen to this real quick. Smash or pass, Jesus. Oh, I'm gonna pass on Jesus. <laughs> oh, I don't even hear that? think about it like that. My bad. My. Did y'all just hear that? She just said, "Smash or pass, 
Jesus. That is the result. They don't even respect him as a pastor. Who in a right mind would ever, 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 ever in their life ask a pastor that kind of question? Who? How do you even ask a pastor that? But since they are living in the same sin as he is, and they see that he is living like this, they don't even respect him as a pastor. That is sad. Man, I don't know this pastor's name. I think I've seen him on Jesse Lee Peterson. Is that his name? Jesse Lee's show, uh, The Fallen State. I want to say I've seen him on there. I'm going to look and see, but that right there is sad. And we have, us, as be, us being children of God, we got to expose those cancers that's trying to say that they're one of us because they're not. They're children of Satan. He is building a church of Satan and posing it as a church of Christ. That is not God's church. We are his children. That is not. His children love him and do what he say. We follow his commands and we try to live according to how he wants us to. Not our own life. Not what I want. Not what Aaron wants. Not what you want. It's what Jesus wants. We got to live like Jesus wants us to live. So we got to sacrifice our own will and the evil, nasty, dirty things that we want to do for God. That right there is a horrible depiction of a pastor. Anybody that goes to his church, if you, if you are not like that, if you actually want to get the real meat of the gospel, if you actually want to know Jesus Christ, go to another church. Run from that church. Run. I'm telling you, run before it's too late. Let me know what y'all think in the comments about this video. I appreciate y'all watching. Again, if this is your first time watching my channel, I appreciate it so much. Please do me a favor, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for the YouTube algorithm. My name is Aaron Page. I thank you and I'm out.